What is he writing? Math by fives? Oh, I love this guy. Shoot, not another one of those hand videos. I'm not really sure if I can take another one of those hand videos. Yeah, okay, here's the game plan today. We're gonna first look at the total differential and then we're gonna take the definition of exact and apply it to a linear def differential. And then I'm gonna show you how to find an integrating factor. And then we're gonna Find the process for finding a general solution to a linear. Great. Here's the total differential. We're going to consider the differential equation in its differential form. The total differential f, right, of some other form function, not necessarily the differential up top, right? We'll get back to that in just a minute. We're taking the total differential of this function of two variables. Sure, it's going to be the partial derivative of f with respect to x, dx, and the partial derivative of f with respect to y, dy. Um, you're familiar with this form. Yeah, um, that's it in one dimensional calculus. Uh huh. So then we'll keep on keeping on. Right. What are we going to do? Ah, uh, yes. We're going to define the definition of exact equations. Right. Okay. So we're taking our differential, right? The one that we were considering. Ooh. It's said to be exact if, now we're gonna try to fit it to the definition of a total differential. We're gonna take our first function, m, and we're gonna take the partial derivative of that guy. Yeah, all right, so nobody usually watches these tiling videos, or not tiling, <laughs> these um, derivation videos. So I took it as a, ooh, some people say, I put the ives in, derivatives. Um, I, yeah, I took the opportunity to um, practice my tiling. Okay, ready, 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 ready? We take the partial of the first function and the partial of the second function with respect to their respective variables in order to see whether or not we can fit it to the total differential. Sure, therefore, wow, this guy really can't spell. You get the Dan Quayle reference? This is a first order linear differential. Mm, it feels like this guy's tweeting. Yeah, he's tweeting over my freaking lecture. All right, so here we go. We take it in linear form. It's exact if, now we're gonna fit it to Clairol's, right? Those partials fit the total differential. Man, what were you doing when you were 13? This is his theorem. You know I had to make a cameo. Uh-huh. Okay. Ready, 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 ready. What do I have for you here today? Yeah. Today, I have the definition of an integrating factor. Let's take a look at this definition. As I write, um, if we have a differential equation in differential form, sure, it doesn't necessarily have to be in differential form, but um, it's gonna help us with our application of exact in order to find this integrating factor in a minute. But now, let's suppose that this differential um, equation is not exact in a domain D, right. Um, but the differential equation with some other function multiplied to each one of those terms, just like that, it can be multivariate, but in our example coming up, it's gonna be single variate, sure. Um, let's suppose that that is exact in that domain D. What did we do? We multiplied through by a function and it made it exact. Exactly. Right. So, um, right. Where are we at? We're, um, right about, right about, right about, right about, right about. Ah, get out of the way. Sure. Um, then that function, which we multiply by each one of those terms, is called an integrating factor. Yeah. Okay. Bye now. Get back to the tweeting over this, uh, 
movie. Creating factor. Well, let's first assume that this is just a linear case. And we're going to take that linear case. Sure. This is a, a familiar form. Perhaps you use the uh, y prime notation. But here we have it in Leibniz notation. We notice here that um, p of x is a single variable function. Right. What are we going to do? We're going to attempt to use um, our methods of separation that we had seen in the last sections. Um, so I'm getting all my um, functions of x on one side. And now I'm going to separate that differential. Sure. Moving my operator to the right-hand side. Now I'm going to get it all to one side, y. Because I'm going to try to fit the form that I had in my exact examples a little bit earlier. Sure. So I take that differential form. Right. And what did I do with that p and that q? I commuted them, factoring out a negative, so that when I moved it to the left-hand side, it became positive and the p's were ahead. Now, if we're assuming that it's exact, um, I could read off, well, that little arrow should be pointing down, right? We're assuming that that guy is going to be exact. So what are we doing? We're taking the functions in front of the dx and the functions in front of the dy. Notice that the dy is um, a constant. Yeah, so what are we doing? With dx, we're taking the partial derivative with respect to y. And then we're going to set that equal to the partial derivative of that um, function. Ooh, right. We also needed to multiply our function through. That's our mu, our integrating factor. That's the one that we got to assume was exact. Right. OK. So now we're taking the derivatives, the partial derivatives of each one of those pieces. In that piece, you see that there's no y. And because there's no y, if we take the derivative with respect to y, it goes bye-bye. Um, now we take the derivative of our first term on the left-hand side, and we see that it does have one function of y. It's y to the first, and it becomes the function multiplied by it. On the right-hand side, wow. So we took the derivative with respect to x of a function of only x, and we got d mu d mu dx. Now what are we doing? We separated each side, dividing both sides by that function. Great. And multiplying, or and separating our differentials. We integrated each side. We notice that the right-hand side is the natural log of mu. So then now what do we do? Why don't we e it up? Sure, that's going to get rid of our natural log on the right-hand side, and then that's a function. Uh-huh. So we have e to the integral of px dx is equal to mu, and we found our integrating factor. Now that we have this integrating factor, how are we going to solve a first-order linear differential equation? So to find a general solution, we're going to take our linear case, we're going to multiply through by that integrating factor that we just found. But I'm going to leave it in mu. Um, notice that this is a, an equation, because you can't find a solution to a function. So we're taking our linear form. And we're going to assume that mu of x makes our um, equation exact. Can you hear my gardeners outside? This microphone does pick up a lot. So we multiply through by that mu. Now what do we do? Oh, looks like we're going to take the derivative. No, that's not what's happening. Can you show me what's happening? Wait for it. Wait for it. What I'm about to do is explain what I'm about to do. Right. What am I doing? Here I'm just considering. I'm taking a look at the product of mu of x and y. And I'm taking the derivative using the product rule. Wow, that's fancy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's the derivative of the second times the first plus the derivative of the first times the second. Great. 
Now let's take this a second step further. Let's take a look at the derivative of mu of x. Remember, this is over on the side, unrelated, and we will go back to the equation when we multiply by our mu. But now I want to take the derivative of that mu. Why? Because I'm trying to show that this left-hand side is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of the product of mu of x and y. So then there you go. Um, that's the chain rule. That's a uh, derivative of e to the u is e to the u du. And then that's that du part. Great. So here we're taking the derivative of the integral, and we're going to get back the function. So I put that function out front. It's easier on the eyes. I see, because e to the integral px is mu x. Now we can return back to our problem. I'm going to rewrite the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Great. So that's that left-hand side. And there should be a tick on that mu. Okay, that second mu should have, uh, it should be the derivative of mu to the x, p of x, y. Um, I'm going to have to edit that in. But that side on the left-hand side goes to d mu dx. Yeah. So then this is what I'm left to, left with. Now I integrate both sides with respect to x. On the left, I'm left with the product on the inside. And on the right, I commute those terms. Foreshadow. I see where this is going. I divide both sides by mu of x, and then that's how I got mu to the minus 1, because I'm talking about the reciprocal. All right, so now let's remember. Mu of x was e to the integral p of x dx. So I'm going to substitute that back in here so that we can get the form that's in your book. Their magic formula that they expect you just to write down and remember. I'm like, oh, why don't you just remember where it comes from and perform the process that we just did in this derivation. When I integrated both sides, I just had to add that c up there, my constant of integration. I neglected that earlier. And there you have it. Box and flower, box and magic. And you do.